In this video pipeline, we will show you how to edit and decimate a character in DAS Studio 3D to later bring into iClone with 3D Exchange 4. The first thing we do is open an original DAS character. Then, we will apply some pre-made data poses to the character. We do this by working with the timeline below. I will type in 100 frames in order to have enough time to work with. Then, I will add poses on certain segments of the timeline. Once I add all my poses, I will double check the full sequence in order to make sure everything is in order. It is important to remember that original DAS characters have heavy meshes. So let's take a better look with the wireframe shader. Here, you notice the amount of wireframes that DAS characters originally have. So what we want to do is to lower the amount of meshes by selecting the character and then preparing the decimator function. You may find the decimator inside the view tab and then tools. With the decimator we can attain lower polygon versions of the same original high quality models. This is especially helpful since iClone utilizes real time rendering that works better with a lesser amount of polygons. Once the decimator is ready, we can choose to adjust the resolution, the polygon count, or both. In this example, we will input a 20,000 polygon count. We will also examine the character by enabling the smooth shader and the texture shader to on. This will help us make sure that the decimated character hits our liking. Once we like what we see, then we click on Done and proceed to resize the texture map. We do this in the texture atlas found inside the edit tab. Inside the texture atlas we first click on auto arrange in order to bring up all the texture maps. We notice that all the maps have been automatically placed in one single image. Then we right click on the texture map column and add another image to collect the small texture maps. We later proceed to drag each small texture map into the new image column we just created. When you're done, just auto arrange again. This will arrange the two images and collect all the texture maps. Right after, we click on Accept and we keep a 512 by 512 resolution in the texture settings. Then, we set the UV name and save it in the DAS export folder. We will also create maps for diffuse, opacity, and bump channels in JPEG formats. Once that is done, we examine our character to make sure that the textured surface display is acceptable. Once you are satisfied with your results, just export your character in Autodesk FBX format and just place it in the same export folder. When the FBX export options pop up, Simply set to default and select the custom Lightwave version along with the embedded textures option. In the scene components, unselect cameras and lights and just choose props and figures. Also, remember to include the animations and click on accept.
Next, we will convert our DAS imported character into 3D Exchange 4. We import the character by loading the FBX file. Notice that the character is lying on the floor. This happens as DAS Studio uses Y as the up axis and 3D Exchange 4 uses Z. To correct this, simply rotate the character 90 degrees in the transform panel. We also quickly review the character and make sure that the animations are all in order. Now, we start by decreasing the specular in all materials since the skin appears a bit off. We do this by taking a drop sample of the skin. Then, we select the Affect All Materials option, and in this case, we reduce the specular to zero. Looking much better now, but we still need to correct the eyelash color. Again, we take a drop sample of the eyelash and change both the diffuse and the ambient color to black. Then we proceed by smoothing the surface normal in the bump channel. We take a drop sample of the surface and lower the bump strength to zero. Now we want to convert the character for motion editing in iClone 4. We do this by converting the character to a non-human character. We click on it and then the bounding box will appear. We click OK and proceed to add a motion clip in the persona command. We can do this by either dragging the timeline marker to the desired motion or by deleting the clip and typing in the time frame in the mark out input. Then we add a new clip and review the animation to make sure we captured the motions we need. Once we are done, we export the non-human character for use in iClone. We make sure that the export options include both geometry and animation, and that the texture size is correct, along with the iClone version we want to export. Then, voila! Exported. Now we will import the character in iClone 4. We start by loading the character from the iClone custom folder. Then we examine the character and proceed to adjust the lighting, the atmosphere effects, and the background to better appreciate our results. In the scene manager, we choose the light to modify and then select the shadow settings to the self cast shadow option. And then we increase the opacity while reducing the shadow range. Then we decrease the bias value and bring up the blur value. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Again, it is always important to review your character before each step in order to make sure you export what you need. Now we will review our motion command by right clicking on our character and selecting the perform clip. We can also drag our time marker on the timeline in order to trim the animation sequence for an appropriate loop. We may also rotate the bones by right-clicking on the character, then selecting the motion menu and editing the motion. This will allow you to control the bone boxes for easy rotation of the parent or child bones. Well that's it for now, we hope you have fun with your new DAS Studio Kit.